so welcome. Uh, this is our last question. The last question in the August 2022 mass paper. Question 7. And let's go straight to our first question 7a. Summarize five powers of a person sharing a meeting. Powers of a person sharing a meeting. In other words, you're looking for functions of a chairman or a chairperson in a certain meeting. So five powers of a person sharing a meeting, number one. Uh, the first power he has is to open the meeting, to declare that the meeting has started, to maintain the order during proceedings. If people are making noise, it is the duty of the power of the chair to make them quiet. So maintaining order during meetings or proceedings. And then also the chair uh, solve disputes fairly and impartially in case of any. In sometimes in meetings, even in meetings, people do mis misunderstand uh, or people do like have conflicts with one another. So in such cases, in such scenarios, the chair person is the one responsible to ensure that such dispute has been solved fairly and impartially without favoring one one person and maybe discriminating the other fairly and impartially also the person the chair person gives equal opportunities to the speakers to speak all members in the meeting are equal so they have equal chances to give opinions they have equal chances to speak so the person to give them permission to speak is the chair person and also it is declares the meeting clause as far as we say it is the one to open the meeting, it's also the one to end or to close or to declare the meeting adjourn. So these are the powers of a chair, of a chair person in a meeting. And then uh, the second section, 7B, we have B1 and B2. And B1 is looking for the meaning of lateral communication. What is lateral communication? Lateral communication is another word, horizontal communication. And it is that kind of communication that takes place within people of the same level in an organization. People who are in the same level, uh, people who are in the same department, for example, that is a lateral kind of communication. So what are the advantages of this kind of communication? Advantages of lateral communication. One, it promotes teamwork and a company-wide sense of unity. Yes, since people in the same level are allowed to communicate, then you can cooperate well, you can work as a team, and basically achieve the common goal. And then also in such kind of communication, misunderstandings are decreased because people are able to communicate. And in case maybe I'm not understanding, I can be able to make a clarification so that we avoid misunderstandings. So in lateral kind of communication, misunderstandings are decreased if not eliminated. And then it also improves problem skills and boosts creativity. Why does it boost creativity? It boosts creativity because we can share ideas we can share opinions. So at the end of the day, two heads are better than one. So if two heads are better than one and they are allowed to communicate and work together as a team, then basically creativity will be on another level. Uh, then also it makes it easier to coordinate teams and tasks. Yes, people communicate freely. People communicate without uh, any kind of hesitation. And because they share views, they share opinions, you get to see that it's very easy for them to cooperate well. It's very easy for them to coordinate and at the end of the day, achieving the common goal. And then also lateral communication empowers employees. Employees feel empowered because they, they feel they have a sense of belonging. They've been given the right to communicate to one another. They've been given the right to interact to one another, for which that can empower them. And also it boosts transparency. Why? Because people are free to communicate to one another. There's nobody who does in, something in hiding. You can ask that person and basically because of such kind of an interaction one-on-one, -on -one, basically it brings about the issue of transparency so that is 7b and then you go to 7c which is the last session of our question 7 it is it is looking for organizational barriers that might interfere with transmission of information in an organization organizational barriers remember we've said communication barriers can be categorized in so many uh, in these so many categories they can be categorized in physical barriers, cultural barriers, uh, semantic barriers. But now here, the question is looking for organizational barriers. Organizational barriers meaning these are the internal barriers to communication. Internal barriers that can make organization not to communicate effectively. One, 
organization or rules and regulations. The rules that are there. The organization which say we only allow upward communication or we only allow downward communication. Such kind of rules will always hinder communication. Because if it's only if it's only downward communication from the boss to the juniors, sometimes the juniors might have important information to share with you, might have important suggestion to share with you, and because the rules do, do not allow them, then they stay with their suggestions. So number one, organizational rules and policies. Number two, status of hierarchical positions in the organization. Making others this can make others feel inferior and others feel superior. So the inferiors, whenever they want to communicate, they look at their status and they say, no, let me just keep quiet. So status and hierarchical positions in an organization can sometimes, not always, but can sometimes also bring about the issue of barrier in terms of communication, especially to the people who are in the junior, people who are in the junior level. And then you also have number three, uh, organizational facilities. And on top of organization facilities, the ones that are used to communicate. How do people communicate? If you are told you only communicate through suggestion box, that means you have to communicate through suggestion box. Even if the kind of communication you have does not support the suggestion box, so it's not supported in the suggestion box, that means you have to stay with it and you never communicate it. So organizational facilities will also uh, will also act as an hindrance or as a barrier in terms of uh, transmitting information in the organization. Last but not least, you have complex organization structure. When the structure is complicated, you even don't know who to report to, you even don't know when you have a problem, when you have something to communicate, whom do you communicate to? Sometimes when you're having complicated structures which are not easily understood, understandable or easily understood by the employees in the organization, then that can also become a barrier when you want to, uh, to transmit information in the organization. So that is our paper, August 2022, Communication Skills, for cast name. Uh, I hope the revision session will really be of help to you so thank you and see you in our next session of revision thank you